Hi, this is Tag again, and today I'm going to do a volt mod overview of these here HD 4550s. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that there is round two of cheap as chips competition, and it is well, you have to use a RV710 core, and the best cars with that are, in my opinion, these um, HD 4550s with uh, DDR3 or uh, lowercase g DDR3. Uh, if this it's Samsung, this one is Hynix, this one is Samsung. Anyway, I got two PCBs here. One is the Dell OEM PCB. You can see here. And the other one is a Sapphire uh, retail card. Now, Sapphire also makes one with a passive cooler, but it has basically the same PCB as this. So, as far as I could tell from images, the mods for this one here should apply to the passively cooled version as well. So let's flip this over. We have our usual uh, feedback mod. Well, actually, on this one it's not all that usual. Uh, this is vCore. Again, obviously detailed mods uh, later. Just my monitoring. Uh, this side is vCore. This one is normal feedback mod, so it raises the voltage. Over here is memory. This is a bit special. Basically, I noticed that stock this card runs the memory at 1.8 volts which might be a bit too much considering this is um, Samsung eDie. It might actually scale better with lower voltage. Uh, so I will be showing you a mod in both directions. Currently I have the mod on here so I can lower the memory voltage. Uh, you can also do a mod with just one variable resistor where you can both raise and lower the memory voltage. Uh, I couldn't do that because the actually I probably could, but the pin here is cut off really short. Uh, so this currently just lowers it. And you would have to uh, switch around this wire uh, between now, currently it's on uh, VMAM. And if you switch it to ground, uh, you raise the voltage. That's it's, it's a really simple mode. Uh, usual capacitors, just added some. And this here Dell card, now I've heard that there are some problems with these not overclocking properly, but I haven't yet tested this one. Uh, but if there is, if I indeed find some problems while overclocking it, uh, and I manage to fix them as in like BIOS mod or something, I will make a update video on that. Uh, this is just a Dell OEM card, Hynix memories. This card actually runs the memory at the 1.5 volts it should. Uh, so this volt mod here raises the memory voltage. This is, yeah, values and and like detailed pins later. Uh, this side is vCore and let me we go over something in case you have a different PCB. Let's just turn this on. Uh, now, with these, come on, focus. These little 8 pin VRM controllers, uh, the feedback pin is almost always, uh, I think this should be pin 7. Uh, pin 1 is up here in this corner. So on the opposite side of the pin 1 marking, uh, second from the bottom, almost always. But if you want to be sure, check data sheet. And basically if you have a card, which I did not include here because there is some different PCBs as well, uh, you can just measure between your feedback pin and ground if you want to raise the voltage. Uh, and then my sizing guideline is basically, this was 4.87 or something uh, kilo ohms. My uh, variable resistor sizing guideline is basically uh, 10 to 20 times the resistance that you have between the feedback pin and ground. 
So this was 4.8 kilo ohms, so this would be a 50 to 100 kilo ohm. Maybe on VMAM, uh, if you're not sure if the, the card likes higher voltage at all, maybe even like 200 kilo ohms, so you can uh, have a lower minimum. This is uh, V-Core, here we have 8 kilo ohms, so here we would I would uh, suggest using a uh, 100 to 200 kilo ohm variable resistor. Yeah, I think that's that's about it for the overview of these two uh, HD4550. So I will now move on to the detailed overview of the mods themselves. Okay, here we are. So let's start with the Dell card. Now, before I get into the volt mod itself, I just want to note these two chips here are not VRM controllers. They are both linear regulators for some sort of minor rails, which are not important right now. Also, HD4550s have these shunts here. Uh, I expect them to be power monitoring, but I do not expect the cards to be uh, smart enough to actually throttle in any way if you exceed some sort of power limit. So unless I find out different, I do not recommend shunt mods on here. Now, your VRM controller is this one here. This is a SC2808A. This controller is not really great, even as far as those 8 pins go. Uh, this is 250 kilohertz switching frequency, so probably the lowest I've seen on a major voltage rail uh, on any of these cards so far. So, anyways, this is your feedback pin. And from there you want your usual Variable resistor towards ground, pretty easy. There we are. Now, for values, I would, uh, as previously mentioned, suggest uh, 100 to 200 kilo ohms here. Uh, good ground points here in this area uh, that I used are, is basically the entire side, so this entire side of these MLCCs. Uh, I, I noticed those work great if you put your variable resistor up here in this corner. Uh, yeah, that's the V core for the Dell card. Let's move on to VMAM. Now we have the same voltage controller here. This is the same uh, SC2808, uh, 2608, and feedback pin is here. And well, from there, same deal. Variable resistor towards ground. Ground is blue. There we go. Uh, for values, I would probably uh, also go with 100 to 200k. You can, in theory, get away with 50k here, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. Uh, simply because then your uh, minimum memory voltage is something around uh, 1.75 volts, I think. Um, so I don't think there is a need for a negative memory volt mode here because worst case is you just remove it and run the stock 1.5 volts. Uh, I, I don't think there is any chance that these Hynix chips scale uh, with lower than 1.5 volts better than at 1.5. Uh, so that's the Dell card. Let's move on to the VGBU on our Sapphire card. Now, same shunts here. So just the HD4550 thing, I guess. Now, here is our VRM controller. This is a UP6101. And, well, this is sort of a more typical 8-pin 
VRM controller, as in it is 300 kilohertz uh, fixed switching frequency. I mean, it's not great, but it's better than 250. So from there, you want your variable resistor to ground again. I'm making ground green here for obvious reason. Uh, now this one here is pretty low resistance. Uh, I measured here 150 kilo ohms, so I would go with a 2 to 10, actually more like a 2 to 5 kilo ohms variable resistor here. Uh, also pretty straightforward, I actually do not know where ground points are here. Uh, I didn't write that down, so probably just used well, this is obviously ground. This is a case ground. And this is also ground. This is uh, the ground of the main filtering cap for for the uh, V-Core uh, VGPU. So let's move on to memory. And this is, I would say, the most interesting vault mod we have here because we sort of want it to function in two ways, ideally. So you have your controller here, same UP6101. From there, you can put a barrel resistor either to ground uh, or you can hook, hook this up to uh, VMAM. So just grab your VMAM from, for example, this cap here where I did. There's also the, the big caps here should be also VMAM. Um, easy way to check is to just measure from the choke here. This is the output side of the VMAM choke. And find a capacitor where you have a VMAM. Uh, now this is this is one way. Basically, if you hook it up to VMAM, you are going to lower the voltage. If you hook it up to ground, you're going to raise the voltage. So third way of doing it is to oh I should say that if you have this here hooked up to uh, ground or VMAM. Then the value for this variable resistor would be a uh, 50 to 100, 100 kilo ohms. Uh, so it it works just fine in both directions. And the alternative way of doing it would be to have your variable resistor here, okay, something like this. And then you hook up the middle pin of the variable resistor to your feedback pin and one side to ground. And the top side to VMAM. Now in this use case, you want to set your variable resistor at the start to be exactly in the middle basically. So uh, for value, I would use something around 100 to 200 kilo ohms here. And basically, if you have a 100 kilo ohm, you set it so that you have 50 kilo ohms between the uh, middle pin and like each side pin. Then you're basically at the stock setting for your uh, VMAP. Now this way would be pretty elegant if you are not sure if you want uh, less than 1.8 volts or more than 1.8 volts. You can do both with this. Um, yeah, I think that's that's about it here. Uh, there is no no switching frequency mods or no fancy mods of any kind basically with these cards. It's just Either you volt mod it like I showed you here, or you just straight e-power it 
which is kind of nice because it's really simple to do. Anyways, that's about it and I hope this helped and I wish you a lot of fun in the cheap ass chips round two. I might be actually participating in all three stages this time, hopefully.